Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bar Shem, El Shai, Bar Shem, Harakar, Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great Musa and all well. And Shalom to the whole full let. This is Paya Allah. This is news and prophecy, prophecy and news update. The date today is, um, I believe it's the 29th. 31. Yeah, the 29th of December, 2023. The hopeful year. All right. Um, so, with that being, all of that being said, um, it being a hopeful year. Yeah, I got a couple articles um, to update you in the spirit on the things that are unfolding through the spirit, showing that we are in, we we truly are in biblical times, and and not no, you know, run of the mill kind of biblical times like. Biblical times have been spoke of since the beginning, the foundations of the earth, as to you know key a key point leading to the kingdom of heaven. All right, so I got a few articles. I'm gonna go into them and um, I'm just gonna bring out information and um, uh, measure it by the prophet prophetic words in a book, the Bible, the good book, and I'm Lord willing you'll be edified, built up in the spirit, looking. Praying and waiting for that hopeful day. All right, so this first one I got is from markets.businessinsider.com. The Markets Insider. So the headline reads, um, Russia and Iran step up de-dollarization drive with pact to shun the greenback in bilateral trade, reports says. All right, so this is something that they've been in talks from for... <laughs> I think for more than a year, right, or about a year, and they've been, you know, speaking up upon it and doing different things to, you know, get it moving and shaking as far as them stepping away from the dollar uh, within trading. And now it's been put through. So it says Russia and Iran have reportedly agreed to avoid the dollar in bilateral trade and use their own currencies instead. The move is seen as a part as part of the de dollarization trend among nations to shift away from the use of the greenback greenback in trade and investment. Russia and Iran both use both facing US economic sanctions have been stepping up their cooperation. Alright, so that's one of the key catalysts as as far as the reason why they they're doing trading moving away from the dollar is because they've been hit with uh, economic sanctions that are weakening their economy so in turn they're taking a stab at the dollar all right by them by them being the world reserve currency the, the currency that the world has agreed to trade in all right then moving away from that means that it takes a certain amount of dollars out of circulation and it's worth takes a big hit especially i'm sure if you do the research you look up uh, the GDP and what uh, Russia and Iran bring to the table as far as um, their share in uh, world economics you know the dollar is not going to be used so that's going to make the dollar a lot weaker alright and we un we know them being a world reserve currency is like the underpin the reason why America, Babylon the Great as it's known in the Bible right and as a dark saying that's the reason why they have so much power okay because their economic standing um allows them to exploit various nations as well as um you know the petrol dollar and different things of that and trading the trade dollar and all that kind of stuff so anyway let's read this russia and iran have entered into an agreement to avoid using the dollar in bilateral trade relying instead on their own currencies a new report says the central bank governors of the two nations sealed the pact at a recent meeting, Iran state media reported. Russian and Iranian banks and companies can now use non-swift messaging platforms and bilateral brokerage links to facilitate transactions in the ruble and real. Both Russia and Iran have been working to shift away from the dollar after the US leveraged Greenback's global dominance to slap economic sanctions on the two countries in recent years. The move is also part of a wider drive among nations to reduce their reliance on the dollar 
and international payments and investments. Countries from China to Brazil have been pushing to increase the global usage of their own currencies, while the BRICS group of nations has been weighing the possibility of a shared tender. All right, so they're possibly moving to the idea of having a BRICS-based currency. All right, something that with all of them um, putting their, you know, their purses in and, and coming up with a joint currency whereby they can trade in. More countries have joined the trend this year. Indonesia recently set up a task force to widen the use of its currency, the rupiah. Russia and Iran, both facing US economic sanctions, have been stepping up economic co economic co co cooperation. Earlier this week, um, the Eurasian Econ Economic Union, made up, made up of Russia, Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan and uh, Kyrgyzstan signed a new deal with Iran, uh, writers reported. All right, so this basically is, as I said, the dollar being uh, uh, the main currency out there, right? This is basically more or less like an act of war, right? This is one of the many, you know, to those that are in the nose, those that are aware of what, you know, this means in terms of how... Um, this is part of your your power, your might among the nations. Know that this is an act of war, and this is another um, act that is gonna, you know, being thrown into the the, the 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 big pot. All right, that's mixing together to brew World War Three. All right, this is all just another catalyst moving towards that day, and showing you that you know steadily, you know rapidly, we're heading on course to World War Three, But we know that that can't be done without what? Other key prophecies being, um, playing out. But this really just shows you that we're on a way, the world is on, on course to a place where it can't move away from. All right, so let's read some scriptures. So this is... One sec. Scripture in my mind, but I can't remember how it's worded. Is it? Ah, oh, man. I can't remember where this script is in. It's right there. I know what scripture I'm looking for, but. Mm. Yeah, it's in Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. That's it. That's it. All right, so this is the book of Micah 2 and 3. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, against this family do I... Let me read down into it. Uh, verse 1, uh, Micah 2 and 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it. Right, in their beds they do it in the night, in the darkness. 
all right, away from the eyes of the people. And when it's light, they practice it, all right? These, these things that we're seeing, these certain agendas that play out before us, like Novid, for example, that whole thing was something that was, you know, formulated in the dark. They thought about that in the darkness and they weighed in on it and then they brought it forth in the light, all right? They practice it because it is in the power of their hand. Verse 2, and they covet fields and take them by violence. Right now you're seeing Bill Gates buy up a whole heap of land in regards to America and a lot of these um, lesser luminaries, elites underneath the elites, are basically, you know, buying up. And even when you deal with America, all right, and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Right, that's why the children of Israel discontinued from the heritage. We are not known in the streets because we have been our our, our true heritage has been stolen from us. All right, you have imposters parading as if they are the true Jews. Verse three. Now it's been the point. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh: Behold, against his family do I devise an evil, which ye shall not remo remove your necks, neither shall you ha go haughtily. For this time, for this time is evil. All right. And this is what's going on. So let's read this to build upon that point. This is what we're seeing culminating right now. So it's the book of Joel 3 and 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. All right. And these, these things, once upon a time, would be decreed great you know acts of you know uh treason all right in the eyes of the america because why they're the they're the power especially like a, a nation like iran all right russia's more of like uh their um their um their arch nemesis all right their main competitor but someone like iran they're a weaker nation that was a, is it was a nobody but this is the Heavenly Father stirring up that spirit, all right, of war. Verse 10, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. And that's what we're seeing with nations like Iran, these BRICS nations like Brazil, Iran, um, China, South Africa. Um, these nations are basically showing their might, all right, and they were weaker nations once upon a time. Verse 11, assemble yourselves and come, all ye even, and gather yourselves together round about Tiver. Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord Jehovah. Let the even be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Yahweh Shapat, Yahweh Shapat, Yahweh the Most High's name, Shapat, meaning judgment, in the lush one Kodosh. So this is where the Heavenly Father is going to heap all these nations in together, right, for that, for the Heavenly Father's judgment. For there will I sit and judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is right. Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for the wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord Jehovah is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. All right, so let me finish with this. To show how speedily this... this destruction approaches this is revelations 11 and 14 the second woe is past second world war is past right which happened in when 1939 to 1945 all right that's past all right and behold the third woe cometh quickly all right no matter how you feel that's nearly 100 years ago world war ii happened and over 100 years ago world war um, one happened that don't matter man the Heavenly Father says it becomes it cometh quickly because you've got to deal with, with, with time in the frame of the Heavenly Father. So those that, you know, put off the day of the Lord thinking that it's always being said, we've got time. Nah, man, it's coming quickly. All right, it's on the horizon. So all that means is no matter how far off you put the day, everything that's happening is consistent to a point where it's going to happen, man. All right, so let's move on to the next article. Um, so, yo, yeah, that's you know, just really a spirit. I might as well go with this one. So this is um, do this is from Newsweek dot com. 
The headline reads, Doomsday Nuclear Clock 2024 Gets Reset As Weapons Fears Rise. Right, this is really showing you what kind of time we're in. Uh, let's pause that. Um, the 2024 nuclear doomsday, doomsday clock has been reset, but there is still time for, fi for final revisions. The clock was created in 1947 by the Bulletin of the A Atomic Scientists, a non-profit that was founded in 1945 by Albert Einstein and the University of Chicago scientists who helped develop the first atom atomic bomb in the Manhattan pro Project. So this is coming from a credible source in terms of the people who created it, all right, the ones that set up the doomsday clock. Now, mind you, the people that created it, they wrote of in the scriptures, one might as well read that scripture. So there's a spirit and energy, or well, really there's a spirit to it all, all right, in that the same people that, you know, came up with the Heavenly Father's sword that will be bathed in heaven, set up a clock, a timer, to show how close we are to that day. All right, so it's the book of um, Isaiah 49. And um, I always forget the scripture these days, man. 54 and 16. All right. Behold, I have created the smith that bluffed the coals. All right, those scientists, they are the smiths. They're likened unto the blacksmiths. You have different coppersmiths, um, not ironsmiths, coppersmiths, goldsmiths, silversmiths, bronzesmiths, but a blacksmith is someone that would be skilled in making war, you know, weapons of warfare, all right? So it's, and that, that, these scientists would be likened onto those kind of smiths, all right? Behold, I created the smith that bluff the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work and I've created the waster to destroy. All right, and that, that instrument is that waster, that ICBM to destroy. It began because of the escalated fears of a potential catastrophic nuclear arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union. It has been reset 25 times since its creation. So it really shows you it's birth pains going on, right? All right, all these things that's happening is just birth pains. Yeah, you, you feel the, um, the baby's gonna be delivered but as far as when and where, you're dealing with the, the, the pains of birth, all right, to to indicate, you know, to being indicative of when the baby's going to land. But you can have a guy into, you know, it, you can have intense labour, man. And that's what we're dealing with right now. We're talking about the end of the world, like Esau, the devil never being present upon the earth no more. The end of the heathen's rule and heading into... You know, the splendor and greatness of the Heavenly Father's kingdom reigning on earth. They say, no, the Heavenly Father deals with controversy, controversy heavily, all right? So, you know, the tra these 25 times being reset since its creation shows how much our topsy-turvy this is, all right? Viewed as a visual representation to warn the globe uh, populace about multiple factors that could negatively affect the planet. The clock has changed on January 24th and moved toward the 90 seconds to midnight, the closest the global catastrophe catastrophe, catastrophe it has ever been. Um, so we're seeing that it's, it's exceedingly close. The reason, inside, the reason incited the US-Ukraine war that as of February will have lasted for two years and has led to nuclear threats from, from Russia. That's right multiple threats all right the clock has set to 17 minutes to midnight the farthest it has been set in 1991 following the culmination of the cold war and the signing of the strategic arms reduction treaty by the u.s and soviet union the clock is set by the bulletin science and security board sasb a select group of global recognized leaders who focus specifically on nuclear threats, climate change, and disruptive technologies, right? So they're paying keen attention to things that are going to be instrumental in the destruction of this place, or more so, the destruction of America, all right? Um, heavy backstory. Uh, so I'm going to go...
I know they're kind of um, kind of nipping everything in the bud in the earlier part of the article. So let's read on to a point, and then we should be should be on point. All right, so. Oops. Yeah. The SASB traditionally sets the doomsday clock in November. This includes finalizing a statement that comes with the annual unveiling, which will take place on January 23rd, 2023. However, the clock can still be revised between November and the unveiling if necessary. Rachel Bronson, president and CEO of the Bulletin, told Newsweek. In November, the board annually comes together and brings their best thinking to the challenges that confront us, Bronson said. They also, they ask if humanity is safer or a greater risk compared to that, to when the clock was last set. Whether it's safer or not than the last 75 years, the question has been asked. Has been asked. Obviously, there's a lot of issues on the table. In many ways, the apples and oranges so in many ways it's apples and oranges, but it's really trying to get, to get a blunt answer on if humanity is safe, as she said. Current global developments that are on the deciding board's collective mind, she said, include the continual war in Ukraine, in addition to the violence in Gaza related to the Israel-Hamas war, the climate crisis, artificial intelligence, and the proliferation of nuclear weapons and stockpiles, bio threats and developments in pathogen research and anything else on a global scale. All these things are all mentioned by our Lord, all right, in terms of the signs of the times coming towards, you know, to the hour of temptation, the time of Jacob's trouble. The only thing they miss is dealing with the MOTB, all right, that C hit, the immutable rice grain, all right. There has been a seismic shift in the understanding of AI in the past few years, Bronson added. The interactions worldwide are different and should be assessed accordingly. All right, so that's more or less it. All right, the main point of this all is that the clock um, has been moved closer. Um... I mean, they're re, they'll re-pointing to it being set at the same time. Basically, it's, less, it's a minute and a half away from destruction, right? That's how close destruction is. So let's read some scriptures on that. Um, first one, I'll go with this one in the book of Job. I should have actually... Um, Those other ones I was thinking of have escaped me right now. Ah, man, what scripture was I going to get? I'll start with this. Job 14 and 5. Seeing his days are determined... The number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Right, so everything we're seeing with Esau right now in his rulership is, has been predetermined by the Heavenly Father. And he's given him this time that he presently has to reign upon the earth. But it's all um, in, t- in, in time with what the Heavenly Father has laid out, right? Which the Lord, you know, I mentioned before, I'll read it again. I can never read it. I say it every time I read this scripture. I can never stress it enough. Because this is this is what's happening. This is what we're, we're, you know, breathing at this present moment. Matthew 24 and 4. And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And this is key. This is highly important, man, not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Right? And be aware of, be... Um, 
sober and vigilant for the, you know, for Satan. Basically, he's trying to catch you out. Verse five, for many shall come in my name saying, I am anointed and shall deceive many. All right, and you have many doing that, misrepresenting the heavenly father's son and taking you away from the true power so that you'll be swept away. Verse six, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. All right, these are things we're presently seeing right now, as spoke of in an article about the war with Ukraine and things of that nature. These are things that are presently happening as of right now. All right. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, things will seal seeing, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences. All right. A lack of bread. All right. Basically, um, food shortages, as they call them today, which is a famine. And pestilences, which is... Uh, you could say pandemics, epidemics, diseases, disease outbreaks, that's pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. I have an article here talking about an earthquake that happened or flooding, all right, that happened, you know, in Santa Cruz. All right, so these things are all happening in diverse places. Verse 8, all these are the beginning of souls, all right, so that's where we're at. So, um, the last scripture I'm going to hit you with before I move on. Doomsday clock. What scripture was I going to read? The clock. Ah, Revelation 7. This is Revelation 7 and 1. And after these things are saw, um, I might throw in an extra scripture. Let's see, I could just read Matthew 24, I'll read this. Revelation uh, 7. Nah, I'll read Matthew 24. And 10, I believe it is, or 14. <laughs> all right matthew 24 and 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come and this is what we're seeing happening right now as i was going to read in revelation the seventh chapter the destruction is being held up held until the elect of the nation of Israel, 12,000 men from each of the tribes, and, and one in turn, one third of the nation of Israel, which 144,000 is the governing body, and the other members within that, I mean, outside of that, are within the one third, all right? And until they are sealed, this destruction is held back, but it works in conjunction with all these different prophecies happening, all right? So the end is steadily approaching. So last article I got here, is um dealing with this refresh this All right so this is from msn.com via denver post it's or this is via msn.com from denver post the headline reads uh two robots are patrolling downtown denver parking gar garages after m are more coming All right um, I'm just going to read a little bit and I'm going to jump into the other article. Uh, Lodemus Prime and his sidekick Dave Rome. Uh, Dave Rome two downtown Denver parking garages every day, watching people park their cars and rush off to appointments in nearby office buildings. If a person lingers too long, Lodemus Prime. Lodemus Prime, Lodemus Prime, Lodemus, Lodemus, Lodemus. So, it's struggling to pronounce that, Lodemus. Lodemus Prime or Dave will start a countdown, five, four, three, two, one. Then the robots call their human security backup. They resemble R2-D2, uh, but without the bleeps, boops, and squeaks emitted by the famous Star, Tro Star Wars droid. Robots went to work in the Lodo Towers 
the two garages on the 17th Street in October 2022, after building management recognised an increase in car break-ins, says Stephanie Chan, a principal with the CIM Group, the firm that manages the property since the company deployed the robots is it has seen a more than 70 percent drop in car thefts and vandalism she said during novid security was a concern across many markets chang said and lodo doesn't it it wasn't immune to that we were researching ways to support our security system our security team and we heard about this we thought it was a very smart innovation surveillance long has been a tool for companies looking to boost security inside and outside their properties. For years, cameras were fixed at doors and walls to record video and people coming and going. So even them saying that means that they want a more present form of camera. So I think that's like a physical presence, like a domineering kind of presence whereby it's more imposing upon the people, right, where... No longer it's like, okay, there's a camera over there. They can see me and I can kind of fuck off. It's more like a, no, there's a there's a robot with a camera that can actively call upon Intel and possibly, as time, as we know, we've seen it, could be armed with lasers or bullets, you know, gun, rapid fire or something, man, and really, like, get you up out of there. Right, that'll be the last car you break into. So let me jump onto this one as well. So this is uh, from foxnews.com. And the headline reads, Crime fighting AI Robocop is keeping an eye on New York subway riders. So similar kind of thing. Oh, man. I'm trying to see if I can find this. So it's a similar looking robot, actually, funny enough. I just sending me here as well. All right. K5, so it seems like they're renting out the K5. K5 is part of a pilot program by the NYPD to deploy artificial intelligence AI robots in, su- in the subway system. The NYPD is reportedly renting K5 for $9 an hour for from a company called um, Nightscope, which claims that, as, that its robots reduce crime. All right, so you can see it there. Same kind of build. RTD2 type of setup. All right. So it really shows you when up time, man. All right. And this is part of um, ESOS Tech. All right. So let's read a couple scriptures on that. I'll start off with the book of Daniel. Uh, this is the book of Daniel 7 and 8. I considered the horns and beheld, and behold, there came up among, uh, up among them another little horn, all right, being America, all right, which is otherwise known as Babylon the Great, according to the scriptures, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, being the UK, 
right? Britain, England, right? Um, France and Spain, right? They were all plucked up and America became its own little horn. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a ma of man and a mouth speaking great things, right? The eyes like the eyes of a man is Esau's technology, right? His great ability of use, right? Which the Heavenly Father has blessed him with, right? So even with this technology as an eyes, all right, this can rack up data, but it's also used as his weapon, all right? So this is the book of Revelation 6 and 3. Um, and when he opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And they went out another horse that was red, all right? This horse that's red, the horse denotes power, and the red denotes Edom. All right, which Edom, Adawam, means red. So it's speaking about the Edomites. And power was given unto him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. All right, so it shows you the holy that a red horse denotes, you know, him setting upon that red horse denotes power. All right, rulership, the so-called white man over the earth. All right, and it says, and the power was given to him to, that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Right, the world is not in a state of peace. It's in a state of war. That's why you have conflict going on the world over, all right? Because this man is in his blessing, uh, as it tells you in the book of Genesis, the 25th chapter, it's done via the use of the sword. And that they should kill one another. And only, that's what it's culminating to, World War Three, And it was given unto him a great sword, all right? So with that sword, that use of that sword, comes his technology. So the last scripture I'm gonna read is this and I'll close out the lesson it's the book of Ezekiel 28 it's I could even read um, because that, that denotes the use of the sword and technology and the book of uh, Maccabees where it speaks about you know the Romans um, the original Romans would have been um, Japheth all right, but the same application was used by um, Esau or Edom. All right, you could, you, you know, it's not speaking about them, but they do use the same, um, the same, um, same agenda. All right, so I'll read this. This is the book of Ezekiel 28, and I'll start from 3. It's talking about Esau, all right? All right. Uh, so it says, um, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can, uh, they, that they can hide from thee. All right. So we read from the book of Daniel. Daniel's had wise, wise sayings about Esau, but Esau is wiser than him. All right. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, has gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. Right. So the use of this technology has, has allowed him to amass great. Amounts of west wealth, so <laughs> wealth by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, as thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, your power, power, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of the Most High. Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Thy brightness. Right, so even though Esau has that blessing right now, it's only going to fall upon his head. But, you know, this is part of Esau's army, the AI technology, you know, the ghosts in the machine, demonic spirits that, you know, Esau has, you know, use of as part of his army. All right, so with that, I pray you're edified to the next one. Say shalom, shalom.